Hey guys, it's Lacey here. Welcome back to my channel. Before you leave today, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, like my video if you thought that it was helpful, and click that little notification bell. It's a little bell icon to make sure that you get notified for the future resources that I post on my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating a great time-saving technique that you can use when having to collect and organize data. Using Google Forms is a great way to collect data, but I've seen way too many people trying to print out and manually input data into Google Sheets when there is a way to do it automatically in less than 10 seconds. Yes, I said less than 10 seconds. Let's take a look at how to do this. Here is an example of a Google Form that I made. Um, this is great not only for, for teachers to send out, uh, a great way for teachers to send out to parents and collect information that you need from them, but I, you know, this is great for administrators, even school nurses. Any, any person um, that needs to collect data from a large portion of people, uh, Google Forms is a great way to do that, whether it's a survey, if it's a quiz you're giving to your students and you wanna you know, populate all of the, the test scores, quiz scores, you know, this, this is the way to do that. Um, so the example that I have here, I obviously I added a custom header to the top of this. Uh, you can do that. I have a video on my channel adding custom headers to Google Forms if you don't know how to do that. And I have here just some simple questions. Today's date, um, student's last name, you know, just because it's not always the same as the parents. And then the first name, um, you could obviously switch these by dragging this and switching if you wanted the student's first name to pop up first in your in your sheet. Um, parents' names, best contact number, and best time to be reached, and then here, any questions or concerns. Okay, so you could definitely um, go ahead and add a, a home phone to this if, if, you know, that's what you want. You can add relationship to um, student, okay? Uh, this way, you know, if it's a grandmother that they might be living with or a, a parent, mom, you know, you want to know who it is, uh, who's, whose information is on here, so you can address them properly when you reach out to them if you need to. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you how to do this piece first, and then we're going to go ahead and move over to populating all of this information into a Google Sheet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my Google Drive. Um, you can go ahead and go to New and down to More and then click on Google Forms. But just so you know, you can really right click anywhere on your drive and that same box is gonna pop up. Okay, so that's just another way to access you know, new documents. So once this is here, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I can type in um, you know, parent information, whatever you wanna call it, okay? And then it's automatically gonna pop up here. Here is where I just, typed in quickly um, from the other example that I showed you. You know, welcome to my class. I'm happy to have the opportunity to work with your students, your children this year. Um, please fill out the questionnaire below to help me understand your questions and concerns for the upcoming school year and the best way to reach you. Okay, so that's what I would put here. Okay, and then I can go ahead and just go down and start typing in my questions. So uh, I did uh, today's date. Okay. And you'll see that automatically Google knows that I want for them to put a date in. Okay, so if that's not what I wanted, I could go ahead and change it, um, but it'll automatically pop up down here. Okay, so it knows it's a date, and then parents will be allowed to go ahead and put the month, the day, and the year. So if you're from a country where you write this in a different form, Google will automatically know from your settings where you're from, and that will change for you. So no worries there. And if, it's a, if you want it to be a required question, that parents have to answer that question, then you're gonna go ahead and click required here, okay? And then when you see the form itself, it'll have an ast a red asterisk next to it. That indicates that for the parents that it's a question that must be answered in order for them to submit the form, okay? Um, and then you can go ahead and you can add question. And this is where I put in um, student's last name. Okay, that's going to be a short answer. Okay, kind of already knew that. If I wanted to put something else, um, let's see, we can do an example of uh, uh, we could do thinking of an example. Best contact. 
Okay, um, then what I can do here is I can put in multiple choice. So, um, parent, if you wanted to add an emergency contact to this form, okay, and then parents would be able to choose from, from a multiple choice section, okay? I can go back, we have student's last name, I can do student's first name, And I'll be able to put that in again. Just make sure that you know you you hit the required section for all the questions. Is you know if it's something that you really are mandating the parents answer. Okay. Um, and then what I did for the best time to be reached. Okay. And then you'll see here again, just as with the date. Google Forms has already identified that I'm asking for a time and they'll put this down here. This way you will not have to worry about parents typing in like letters or, you know, um, incorrect information there because they're going to be forced to put a time in and, and that, that helps with that. Uh, the same thing here, if I go ahead and I'm going to put in, um, Next contact. Oops, sorry. Best contact number. Okay. I have a slew of like uppercase and lowercase letters here, but you get you get what I'm trying to do. Okay. Um, if I go ahead and I want a phone number to be written in a certain certain format. I can go ahead up here. Um, so I'm from the United States. There's usually a three-digit area code and then um, three digits. And this is how we, we type out our phone numbers. Okay, so if this is the format that I want parents to write the phone number in, I can always put that next to it so that they know down here that that's what I'm expecting them to write. And then I can go ahead again and I can just write required. Okay, um, if you actually want to use this to collect, you know, quiz, like if you're making a quiz on here and you want that, that data to be populated um, and you're not sure how to do that, I do have a, a video for that as well. Um, but just for the sake of, of this and everyone going back to school and a lot of data needing to be, you know, probably virtually in the beginning of the school year collected, this is a great way for you to do that, okay? Um, so now that we have all the questions and you know how to create them and make sure that they are a required question. You're then going to go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my form here because this one's completed. This is the example I'm going to use. I just wanted to make sure you all knew how to create the questions and make sure that they were <clears throat> going to be answered. Okay, um, for my last one here, uh, I have questions or concerns. This is gonna be a longer answer. So just so that you know, if let's say, this was the same question that I had just demonstrated, uh, showed for you on my example. You can always go and do, you know, um, paragraph if you wanted to. Okay, for me, it automatically knew that I was asking for a little bit longer of a response. So it just said long answer text. If you type in paragraph, it's going to be the same thing. It'll just allow parents to type in more than one sentence if they need to. So either way, we'll be, we'll be fine. Okay, once you have this, I had a, I've already gone and um, filled out one of the responses. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to share this with your parents. If you type, click here, send, okay? And you're gonna click that little, looks like a paperclip, but it's a link, okay? Um, if you don't wanna send them this big, long link, you can click the box here where it says shorten URL, okay? And then you could just copy this and then send this off to your parents. Um, if you have a, a class app, I have a video on how to make those as well. It's a kind of like a hub for you to put uh, student homework in, maybe uh, signups if you're having events this year. If you want to link a classroom newsletter, you could link the forms here, okay, for any data collection that you're gonna be um, using or collecting from your parents. That would be a good place to do that. And like I said, I do have 
a video tutorial on how to set up your class app if that's what you choose to do. Otherwise, if I just email this to all my parents, when they get the link and they go to the link here, this is what it's going to pop up looking for them. Okay, so here, okay, it says the today's date. Okay, so today is August 11th. Okay, and then Student's last name, I can just write Smith. Um, I can write Tanya. Parents' last name, okay. I can type in Smith, first name Lisa. Okay, you see those little blurred out boxes? It's just because for some reason, Google, well, not for some reason, Google automatically will try to automatically fill in documents for me. Okay, uh, so I'm just blocking out my phone number and stuff. Uh, phone number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Perfect. Best time to reach me. You can write at 5 p.m. Okay, and you can see that before I was finished filling it out, it was telling me that it wasn't done. A little red error message popped up on the bottom, which is great. Um, questions or concerns. Um, How will um, transportation work with social distancing? Okay, perfect. There, and I can go ahead and I can hit the submit button. All right, that's wonderful. So as a parent, I've already gone and I filled out the survey. Now, if we go back to our form, you'll see here under responses, it says two responses. So if we click on that, the responses are here, okay? And this is great to have. However, once you get more than uh, a dozen or so responses, this can be a little overwhelming. So to populate this data in a Google Sheet, you'll look here and you'll see the little sheets icon. If you just click on that, it will go ahead and it'll populate your data here in a Google Sheet with your headings on top. Okay, so I had done this in advance for all of you. Um, it's not going to pop up with these being bolded, but that's super easy. So um, if I go ahead and I <laughs> highlight the titles, okay, you could do the same with yours. That's when you can go ahead and you can either make them bold or not. You can change the size of the fonts. Uh, you can change the color of the font if you want and the color of, of the columns. Uh, just something to, to know is um, these will not, your, your, your cells are not going to format to the size of your, your sentences. So for example, when I first put this in, this last question here, because it's longer, it doesn't fit in the standard size cell it was stretched out over a few cells. And that's when I just went and I just stretched my cell areas to make sure that it all fit. Okay, um, so this is how you move your information, populate it from Google Forms to Google Sheets. If you have any questions, comment down below. But again, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and click that notification bell so you don't miss my future resources. Take care, everyone.